welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today is um, Tuesday. So you guys will be getting this vlog on Sunday. So I shared with y'all two videos ago that I wanted to try to implement more gardening on the channel. I just want to give y'all some different content and then just kind of show you other things that I do on a regular basis besides doing home decor. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Trina. Like I said, we always do. We decorate all the time on this channel. We have been doing that for a few years on YouTube. And I thank you all so, so much for all your support and love over the past few years. But I do want to implement some outdoor um, activities and some outdoor um, gardening, home and garden and stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video, y'all. So I'm out in my shed because I want to get some stuff planted up today. Um, I do want to start some potatoes from seeds and I also want to plant some carrots so I'm going to be doing that today and then also I'm going to harvest some broccoli and some of my collard greens. I put my broccoli in the ground probably around November. I have learned that living in Houston that for me the easiest way to grow broccoli down here is to plant it during the fall. So I planted this broccoli around November so now they've been in there almost like 90 days so it's about time for me to harvest it harvest them before they start to flower. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be harvesting, them, harvesting some broccoli, we're going to be harvesting some collard greens, and then also I'm going to plant up some potatoes, I want to do some carrots, and then I think I'm going to plant some onions as well. So I have some seeds already for the carrots and onions, but I don't have any potatoes. So I am going to go to Home Depot and see if I can grab some seed potatoes or either like my local nursery, see if I can grab some um, seed potatoes from there. But anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. I have my coffee. So I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I don't know if y'all seen the videos or whatever. I know some of you guys were asking for a tour of my shed. So I'll kind of go around and kind of give you like a little mini tour today in this video as well for you guys, just in case some of y'all are new. So my husband built this shed maybe about two years ago for me. I originally have it, um, I originally wanted to use it as a home office, which I am using it as a home office, but it also serves two purposes for me. So it's a home office and it's also a potting shed. So I use this office to start up a lot of um, my vegetables from seeds, a lot of my flowers from seeds, as well as using it as a home office. So I, it has to serve dual purpose for me. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to take you around and show you my she shed slash potting shed, whatever you want to call it, y'all. Okay, y'all, so this is better. So on this side of the office, I have um, just two chairs over here. I have uh, two chairs. I got those from Wayfair. I just use it here just in case I want to have somewhere else to sit or if somebody else is coming out here to uh, chit chat or whatever, they can sit out here with me as well. So I got the two chairs there. And then, like I said, I got this little table here, which I usually put extra plants and stuff on there if I need it. Um, you know, if I need it right now, it's empty. Then I do have a little calendar over here where I use to update all of my, you know, my tasks and everything. I have my little calendar over there. Um, and then on this side, you'll see this is the door here. Um, I usually hang my garden hat. I got a little bag there or whatever. I just have some hooks here for hanging stuff on. I just got that ginger jar in the corner on this little table here i have my little potting soil or i have my little watering can on this side and th these buckets is where i keep all of my um as you can see i use these because it's um they're airtight and then i use them as you can see to start like my seed starting mix i have potting soil in that one and then I got a lot of roses, so I got my rose tone and fertilizer in there. So that's what I usually keep these buckets for. That way they're not like out in the element. So that's what I have on that side. And then, um, hopefully I got water in here. Hopefully this thing don't fall, y'all. So yeah, so that's what I got on that side. And then this side, this is what I just showed you. These are the grow bags I was just showing y'all. Look how big these bags are. So they're they're pretty wide, as you can see. See how wide they are? So they are perfect for putting potatoes, carrots, and things like that. So that's what we're going to do today, y'all. So I got like five of these extra bags. So on this side of the wall, y'all, is where I have my desk area. So this desk is nothing fancy about it. I got this desk from Ikea. Um, I absolutely love it because I love it for the storage. I really need it somewhere where I can put... I don't just store office stuff in here. I also have like... 
um, some extra seeds, some extra gardening stuff in there. And then also have like, you know, all of my papers work and all that stuff that's related to YouTube and all that stuff is that I use these drawers for a variety of things. So they work perfectly for me. And all it is, is the Ikea desk that goes across this way. And then it's like three of those separate cabinets that they sell on Ikea. That's all it is. And then absolutely, it works perfect for me. And then this here, these handles, I end up getting them from Amazon and I just added them to the desk. So they were very inexpensive. I think you get like maybe five for $20 or, or 10 for $20. It was really cheap. So I ended up getting some of those and just added the little gold handles on the, um, on the drawer like that. So you pull it out like that. It looks really, really gorgeous. So I absolutely love it. And then I have my little artwork that I got from, I think, the at-home store. Some of y'all asked me about my wallpaper. My wallpaper was a collaboration that I did with a company called Ever Wallpaper. I absolutely love the wallpaper. I love the design on it. They have a lot of unique, different kind of wallpaper on their website. But just keep in mind, my uh, walls are textured down here. And it's been holding up really good so far. But it was... It was difficult getting it on the wall, I'm not even going to lie, because my wall has that knockdown texture on it, and sometimes it's hard for the wallpaper to adhere to that texture. And I think I actually, I even got a whole video on this wallpaper on the channel, so I'll link it down in the description box below if you guys want to go back and see that setup and see that process, but I'll link it down in the description box um, so y'all can see it. But yeah, just keep that in mind, because my walls are textured, and sometimes the wallpaper, it's been holding up so good, I think it's been like maybe almost a year that I have it, had it on the um, wall, and I haven't had any issues so far with it. But just keep that in mind. It was hard for me to get this on the wall. And I did have to use some glue. This little thing I got from Ikea. So I got this, this little thing from Ikea because I needed extra storage out here. These are like little baskets. The Okay, the contraption came from Ikea. The baskets came from Ikea as well. So you do have to buy the baskets separate. They don't come with the actual... Um, furniture piece so i did buy the basket separate which i like it they fit in these little boxes and crevices good i'll probably end up buying more of those baskets but i wanted to be able to use you know the little inserts and put stuff in there that can um you know they may not be able to fit in the basket but the baskets i just have like you know like garden gloves you know i got like little um this is stuff for my drip line and all that stuff for the irrigation for the garden in there um What's in here? Oh, this one's empty. This is why I had those grow bags. So that's empty. I had the grow bags in there. And then in this one, just extra seed starting trays and little markers and extra light, grow light that I needed for my seeds. And that's that. And then on the shelf here, this oregano I got from my local nursery. So it was like a little mom and pop nursery that I love going to. So I bought um, oregano and I bought some thyme. I'm getting ready to... Um, plant up a green stalk but i'm not going to do that yet until march 1st so that's why a lot of the stuff is still in here because it's too still too cold to put everything out um already because i think we still have a few days where it's going to be 30 degrees so that's why they're in here so this is some thyme this is some oregano this is some uh thai basil that i started from seed this is some, you see i planted some oregano y'all it didn't do nothing i planted some this is extra oregano and extra bagels though that i planted um, that the oregano didn't do anything, but the basil did sprout, so it's doing okay. And I really need to up, uh, repot it out of this container. I started, this is like an egg carton that I actually started some seeds. I wanted to test it out just to see because I had started some tomatoes, um, from seed back in December and they didn't do, they, uh, they sprouted, they did well, but then they died. So I ended up having to start all of my seeds over y'all. And so I started them all over. And then this time when I started them, I started them in egg crates. And then I had like, what was it? 36 seeds that I started in egg crates. So as you can see, some of the stuff is already gone because I actually already repotted those things in other containers. And then I also had another one of these that I had all of my tomatoes in that did really good. And they already are in like six inch pots already now. So that's why this is here. But this one I'm saving for my sister. I have to repot it up. But anyway, so that's that. That's why that's the thing I got from Target. Um, I got this from Target, y'all. And this is like a little candle holder, a candle warmer. I got it because so it can, um, you know, add some scent here in my office. You know, without me forgetting to leave it on. Because it automatically shuts off. I love this thing. So it warms the candle. It makes it smell good. You can set the timer for however long you want to set the timer for. Like this one goes from 2, 4, 8 
yeah, two hours, four hours, or eight hours. This candle warmer came from Target. Really nice. And I just got a cancel on the candle on there. At the top, I really don't have much going on up here. I just have some decor, have my acrylic little dry erase board, which y'all know I need to update. That thing still say January child. So I need to update that. And then I got this harvest basket, which we're going to use this because we're going to get ready to harvest our broccoli and our some collard greens with this basket today. So that's for that. Then over here, oh, I got my little grow light up here. This is the light I got from Amazon and it turns on and you can set it on timer, but I never do. And over here, I just have like um, all of my seeds, all of my seeds that I've started and everything seems to be doing good so far. So I'll give y'all like a quick run, run down what we got going on. So as you can see, I got everything kind of like, oh, this is not, let me see. This is the, yeah. Just back because I roll in the back. So we have like some cayenne pepper. I got some oregano, some thyme, more of that Thai basil, cat mint, regular cardinal basil, lemon balm, um, more cayenne pepper, thyme. Uh, this is the bell pepper, lemon balm, more uh, seeds. These is what I bought from my local nursery because they I'd seen this in there, which I thought was um, really interesting. It's called a yellow pear. So that's why I got this. I always buy a couple from the groceries. Not, I always buy a couple from my nursery just in case mine don't produce like how it's supposed to produce. At least I won't have, I won't forfeit my whole harvest. So I got, um, so a yellow pear. Then I got two big beef, I think. Is that? No, I got one big beef and one Roma tomato. Because I didn't plant any Roma tomatoes, actually. And you can tell these plants have already been out and been started months ago. So these are for the ones from the nursery. These are the ones that I started, which they are still, they're like a month old. Yeah, not even almost a month old. So they're doing pretty good. This is their first set of truly. So they're doing good or whatever. I repotted those up. These are the ones I started in the egg crate. And I was just telling y'all I started them in the egg crate. So these are, so they're doing good. And then I have more, um, more peppers up here. And then I have more, uh, more bell peppers up here that I started. One of these is the kitchen pepper that I started. I can't even, it's probably up here somewhere. Um, oh, this is the one that I started from. This is the kitchen bell pepper. I wanted to test it and it's doing good. It has the biggest leaves on these things so far. The bottom, I have some lettuce. Those are some colia seeds that I started in the bottom. And then these are some Rubecchia, uh, I think, yeah, Indian summer that I um, planted, which these things take a long time to come up. So that's what I have down there. And then I have one lettuce. I always struggle with lettuce. This lettuce just don't be doing what it's supposed to be doing, child. So I don't know. That's that. Look out here, I think the last time I did a tour, well, last time I shared this room with y'all, but I had to take that rug out of here because that rug kept getting dirty. When you out here in the garden and all, it just tracks too much dirt and stuff on it. And I got tired of, I got tired of cleaning that rug all the time. So I just took it out. And so I'd rather have nothing, <laughs> just the floor. All I got to do is just vacuum it up, sweep it, and then mop it. And it's good. So we're going to, so that's my office setup. So y'all can kind of see what I got going on. So this is what I got going on out here. Now we're going to go to Home Depot because like I said, I'm going to get the seed potatoes. And then also I want to get some soil so I can plant up the potatoes. I don't think I got enough potting soil. I think, yeah, not for those bags. Those bags are huge. So let's head to Home Depot. Actually, I want to go to Lowe's and see what they got at Lowe's, y'all. Because I've seen some people been hauling stuff or, you know, because I'm still filling in my garden out there with plants and stuff, which is, they. I have some big shrubs in there, but I'm still looking for some other stuff to go out there. But let's go to the store, y'all, and see what they got as far as plants buys. But we need soil anyway, so why not go and look? So, okay, y'all. Okay, you guys, so we are out at Lowe's. And as you can see, they already have some of their frost-tolerant annuals out, like pansies and things like that. So some of those things are really frost-tolerant, so you can put those out already in your garden if you, or in your um, containers if you want to decorate with a little bit of color right before spring. But today, we are here just to find some onion uh, plants and then some uh, potato seeds so we can plant those up. As you can see here, Lowe's have a large selection of the Bonnie brand um, veggies that's already out. So if you don't want to start your garden vegetables from seed, you definitely can get the plants that's here that's already been grown in the greenhouse already started from seeds and go ahead and just plant those in your raised beds or containers or whatever just to um you know if you want to you don't have to start everything from seed i would say that they do have a large selection 
of different kind of vegetables. From what I'm seeing here, they already have their peppers out. They have broccoli, collard greens, they have tomatoes, mint. As you can see, it's a large selection of veggies that's already out. And usually these run between, I think, $5 to $5.98 a plant. So they can be pretty pricey. So I definitely would recommend you trying to start some things from seed. That way it kind of cut back on some of the costs. So, and then also when you start things from seed, you have a larger selection. So typically at the big box stores, they usually only have like one brand of um, vegetables that they have available. And they mostly, mo all of them are usually the Bonnie's brand, which is they can't, they are a good brand, but definitely if you're looking for different varieties of vegetables, and herbs and things like that, I definitely will recommend you checking out starting some things from seed. So I'm gonna grab some of these onions here. In my zone, my zone is 9B. So we need the short date onions. And this is the, and here they only have one variety of onions, which is this Georgia sweet onion. So I'm just gonna grab one of these. And these are typically like a yellow onion. So that's what I'm gonna grab. As you can see, is like one bundle is like $5 and um, 48 cents. A bundle so you get a lot of onions so that's what we're gonna grab here I'm just checking and making sure that they look good because some of these if they're sitting out here they can be uh, moldy or damaged and things like that so you just want to make sure you check um, you know check your crop and everything before you actually buy them so I'm gonna grab one of those and then now we're just gonna head over and buy some container mix or some soil to plant these up So for my container mix, we're going to go over here and um, usually I usually stick to the same brand, but I also like to add in um, raised bed mix and then some compost as well. But since we're putting these in grow bags, the potatoes and the onions, I'm just going to grab some container mix. I like using the Miracle Grow Performance or the Enhanced Performance. It says on the bag that it has aged compost in there. I really like this soil mix because it have worked really well for me in the past. So I usually kind of stick to what I know. And then I'm just going to add in some, um, a little bit of fertilizer with the container mix. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to grab three of these bags. And these bags are um, pretty pricey. They're like $12 and some change per bag. And I don't know how many um, cubic feet this is. But I am trying to grow some, start my own compost and everything. I actually have some prepared, but it just haven't been uh, finished yet. So over here, I'm going to grab a couple of packs of these uh, seed potatoes. I really love uh, Yukon Gold potatoes, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of packs of these. They're $4.98 each pack, and then you get like four seed potatoes per pack. And then as you see here, they have some onions over here as well that you can get, but these are the onion um, bulbs, but I, I usually don't have really good luck with the onion bulbs, so I'm not going to grab those. I'm just going to stick to the little... Um, starts that I have purchased pre that I just put in the um in the cart but as you can see if you need some seed starting uh trays or mixes they do have all of that available they do have some of these berry bushes available like raspberry blueberries I'm gonna come back and get a couple of these because I do want to have a couple of um bl uh, blackberry bushes in my garden as well so now that we have our mix we're gonna go ahead and head home and get these planted I want to go over and just show you guys what we are, what I'm growing so far out in my garden before we start planting up our onions and potatoes. So this is my Brussels sprouts here. I planted these in November, mid-November, and they are doing absolutely well. They still have a little bit of ways to grow before they actually are ready to harvest. As you can see, something's been chewing on the leaves here. So I always like to go out and inspect and make sure no bugs or anything are growing on them because pests in the garden is a real thing and it's annoying. So I try to go through and make sure there's no pests or anything growing. But today we are going to harvest these broccoli um, crowns that I have here. I planted these out in mid-November as well. And as you can see here, they're doing really good. Now, I did suffer some um, damage from frost on these uh, broccolis. As you can see, some of the leaves got burnt. I did cover it up and they still end up getting a little bit of damage on them. I think some of the netting came off. But yeah, but the crowns are still preserved and they actually are looking really good. So I'm going to harvest these because these have been in the bed for about I can say almost 90 days now. So I think they are ready. And I think that this is the biggest it's going to get. So I'd rather just harvest them now before they actually start to turn into, uh, start to flower. Now they say you can harvest the leaves as well. So I'm going to cut off some of the leaves and then I'm going to cut off most of the, uh, the crowns as well. 
Now this bed I'm planning to use as my cut flower bed. So I want to just, I, you can actually just harvest the crowns and then leave a little bit on so continue to grow. But since I want to get my bed prepared for cut flowers, I'm just going to go ahead and harvest all the broccoli. Now in this bed, I have some collard greens that's growing. I planted these out in November as well, and they are doing excellent. Now I did notice that when I flipped some of the leaves back that they had a few aphids on it. As you can see here, you can see those little um, bugs on the back of the leaves. Aphids love to live on big green leafy uh, vegetables like this. So I'm going to treat that um, later on in the video as well. But yeah, but the, other than that, they look really well. And then some of the other things I got planted out in the garden so far, I have some lemon mint. I got this from my local grocery. This is doing really well. It's in one of these self-watering containers. So that's doing good. I do have some onions that, now these onions I planted out in November as well. I started these from the little onion um, bulbs and this was from my local nursery. As you can see, they're doing pretty good. So they've been in here a while. Um, I did have more, but I think the squirrels have been in here and dug up some of the onion bulbs that I had. So some of them are missing over there that didn't do good. But anyway, you guys, so we're going to go ahead and harvest this broccoli. This is my first time actually growing broccoli successful. Usually when I plant my broccoli out in the garden in March, they usually end up turning to flower before I could even harvest them. So I'm so excited to harvest this broccoli today. So when you're harvesting your broccoli, all you want to do is just cut at an angle and then see how you have this little extra shoot. You can just leave that on and just cut off the top and then they'll still regrow another broccoli. But like I said, for me, I'm going to clean out this bed because I'm going to use it to plant. Um, I got like five different varieties of sunflowers that I want to plant in this bed. So I need this to be cleared out so that I can get ready to have it prep for spring. So, yes, yeah, so we're just going to harvest all the broccoli and just remove as many as we can and then just clear this bed out.
this is all the broccoli that we were able to harvest, you guys. I'm absolutely so excited and happy with the way, um, how much broccoli I was able to harvest. So I'm just going to clear out the rest of this bed. I am going to cut these stems. Now you can just pull them out and then just, I usually like to toss this in my compost bin, but my compost bin is super full. So I'm going to cut um, some of these off to go into my compost bin. The rest I'm just going to toss. to share with you guys the variety that we actually just harvested so this is the variety it's green magic it is a bonnie brand and these were um started with the plant start so these they weren't from seed i just purchased these plants from home depot back in november and i thought why not just try to see how it turns out and i'm absolutely happy i'm actually happy with uh the results of it so if you want to try this variety out for yourself I highly definitely recommend. I did have the chance to cook these up that same day and they actually turned out really delicious. So yeah, so it's a good variety. Okay, you guys, so we're going to treat these, um, some of these collard greens that I have aphids on. I'm just going in, I'm just cutting out the leaves that have the bugs on there. Most of the ones that are like touching the soil, they kind of have some um, discoloration and stuff on there. And then have, they have really bad aphids on the back. I'm cutting those out. So I'm going around and I'm cutting those all off. And then they say that a way to treat aphids is just to take the water hose and blast them off. So I am going to do that, but I do have some fungal side garden safe um, organic fungal side that I'm going to spray on here as well. I usually, usually use this with my um, house plants as well. So yeah, so I'm going to spray some of that on here just to treat it and then we'll have to harvest these on another day. Um, after we let that set for a few days or whatever, then we'll go ahead and harvest it. But right now I'm just going to cut off all the lower leaves. See, this bed was doing really well. And then I messed up because I actually incorporated some old soil in here that was in some flower pots. I was trying to clear out the um, garden area and clean up back here. And I actually didn't want to waste the soil. So I ended up mixing it in with my vegetables, which I shouldn't have did. Cause I think that's what kind of drew those aphids into my soil. So word of advice, don't mix old soil in with your new vegetables because you just don't know what's growing in that soil so I'm gonna um, like I said clean this up and try to treat this so that I don't lose any of my um, collard greens Okay, you guys, so I went in and I did wash my hands and everything. I took those old gloves and, and set those aside, so I need to clean those. But now we're going to go ahead and just plant up our potatoes and then our onions, and then I'm going to water everything in at the end. Um, that way I can um, get everything watered at the same time. 
Um, so I'm using these 10 gallon grow bags. I did get these from Amazon. I love these. I love using planting vegetables in grow bags because you can move them around to wherever you need them to grow. And then if you have a small space or a patio or balcony, these work really well for starting your own vegetables if you don't have the in-ground space to do so. So I'm going to add in two bags of that potting mix that we, um, or that container mix that we bought from Lowe's. And then I'm going to add in um, a little bit of fertilizer. I'm just using some micro life fertilizer that I purchased from um, my local nursery to give the, uh, the seeds a good head start. So that's what we're doing here. So these bags are huge. So I'm going to try to fit as much as I can in each grow bag. So I know on the packaging sometimes it'll say to space things out. But when you're working with a small space, I try to um, compact as much stuff as I can just so I can um, maximize my, uh, my uh, garden space. So every time I'm out here in the garden, I'm always looking for my garden gloves. I have bought so many garden gloves because you can get a really good deal on Amazon for garden gloves. But today I just could not find a pair <laughs> that match. So I have on one green and then one blue, but that's okay. Whatever gets the job done. So we're going to go ahead and plant up these seed potatoes. So as you can see, the seed potatoes, they all have these little roots sticking out or the eyes. So I'm going to plant mine. Um, facing upward it does say on a package that you can plant them it doesn't matter which way you plant them but I'm just gonna play plant mines facing up and then you want to bury these a little bit deep so I'm just gonna um, go around and this I'm just gonna space these a couple of inches apart and then I'm gonna try because there's four potatoes in each pack so I have a total I have two packs so it's a total of eight so I'm gonna try to squeeze all eight into this uh, grow bag I did forget to label um, the potatoes and onions in this video, but I did go back um, the next day and actually I always try to put the variety of the item on the little label as well as the date so I don't know when I started so I can tell how long things have been um, planted out. So yeah, always make sure you label everything so you know what you're growing. Okay, you guys, so now we're going to go ahead and start our onions. So I'm doing the same thing as I did with the potatoes. I'm going to add in two bags of that container mix. I'm going to still add in my fertilizer. And I'm not going to plant all of those onion um, sets because there's a lot in there. So I'm just going to plant as many, try to fit as many as I can into this grow bag. Because I, I want to leave some space in between each one. And then onions, you can plant them kind of shallow. You don't have to plant them as deep as the potatoes. So I bought like three bags of that container mix from Lowe's. Actually, I needed four. So, but I do have some extra container mix inside of my um, shed. So that's what you see me adding in here. It's the same brand of soil. So, but it's just been sitting out a little bit longer. That's why you see the soil that I had from Lowe's, those bags are kind of wet. So these ones are um, a little bit drier. So I still like to go through and sift through the soil just to make sure there's no sticks and things like that. Because sometimes with that potting mix or container mix, they always have like, sometimes they'll have like branches like these in there. So you just want to make sure you kind of rub your fingers through and make sure there's nothing else in there with the soil.
Okay, so before you start planting these onions, you do have to take them apart. And some of these are really root bound together. So we're going to have to separate them or carefully separate those. But yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of onion sets in here. I mean, it's a lot. So I usually like to go through, separate them. I like to plant the ones that have the bigger bulbs on there. I think they have a better chance of becoming um, bigger onions. So that's what I'm doing here, just going through and picking out the ones with the larger bulbs. And then the other small ones, I'll still plant them, but I'll um, use them more for green onions because if they don't turn into bulbs, you can use these for green onions. So hopefully we'll get some bulbs from these onions. But I think I got a total of like 18 onion plants in this bag. And then I still had like almost a half of the package left. So it's a lot of onions in that one pack. <music> Okay, you guys, so now that we have our potatoes and onions planted, I'm going to go ahead and just water everything in over here. A lot of times during the winter time, I don't really um, have anything on irrigation. I just hand water stuff because a lot of this stuff, you just need the rainwater and they do really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and water all of my um, plants and everything that's over here. And then I water those potatoes and onions that we just planted. You always want to make sure you water everything in when you after you get done planting them as well so yeah so i cannot wait for spring you guys to plant up some beautiful flowers i got another large flower bed along well it's behind me that i'm gonna be pretty much planting in a lot of um plants in that area too so i can't wait to share more gardening content with you all if you all are enjoying this video, don't forget to give my video a big thumbs up. It really lets the YouTube algorithm know that you like this content and they'll definitely suggest more of it to you. And it also lets me know that you guys enjoy watching this kind of content as well. So remember I told y'all that the they say you can uh, kill the aphids from just splashing it with the water pressure or the water hose on uh, full blast. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just kind of rinsing everything off and then making sure um, I try to get all of those bugs off. And then I'm still going to treat it with my um, uh, garden safe fungicide 
just to make sure that they're dead because I really don't want to harvest anything that has bugs on it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just rinsing that off and then I'm going to water everything in. watch this video to the end you are a trooper i thank you all so so much for your support y'all i have this huge space behind my shed and i don't know what to plant back there so can you guys give me some of your ideas of what you think i can plant back there i have flowers and everything along to the behind me it, the bed goes all the way around so i'm gonna fill it in with lots of plants lots of color lots of pollinators and everything but it's kind of shaded back there so do you have guys i want you to share with me in the comment section like what ideas do you have that i can plant back there as far as like a shaded area or a shade garden for the behind my shed so let me know your thoughts because i don't know what to do with that space if before i was just using it just to store all of my tools and everything but it's a pretty large amount of gardening space back there but i just don't know what to plant so let me know in the comments down below what can i plant behind my shed back there Okay, you guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope you all enjoy hanging out with me. I hope y'all got some gardening inspiration. We are just now getting started. The spring season is coming. It's not here yet, but we still got a lot more work to do. So I hope that you guys get something out of this video. So I hope you guys encourage you all to get out there in your own garden. So thank y'all all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.